Hey guys and welcome to my guide to Galacrass on Flex difficulty. Now this is a flex guide, so I'm going to try to shorten things down. I won't go over the sp uh, abilities in like sort of specific numbers. I'll basically just go over what you need to do to get the kill. And at the end of the day, that's all that really matters. So first, let's talk about the flow of the fight. There are two towers which are opened up by engineers on your faction. Um, and they're important later on. So as the fight goes on, they'll open more of the towers. You need to split the raid, having a team to secure the ground area and a team to secure towers. We like to split the raid in two, and uh, that basically meant that the tower group was half the raid. Now, some people like to have uh, the tower team being four people in ten man. I'm just using Tez as an example, but you can just, you know, make it out in proportions for your flex group. Um, so, yeah, it's either four or five people, half the raid, roughly. And after you secure both of the towers, you'll have access to the two cannons on top. And uh, in order to t kill Galacrass and to, you know, take him down to the ground so that you can execute the second phase, you need to hit him twice, uh, basically at the same time with the two towers. That's why you need to get the two towers. So, let's go into the actual fight in specific, and this time phase one. So initially you will need to protect the friendly NPCs from the ads that will come to attack you. The first wave will contain a whole bunch of ads, but the only one that's really of any significance is the Bone Crusher. The Bone Crusher must be killed and stunned when it casts Fracture. Fracture will damage the friendly NPCs, and if one of the friendly NPCs, like, you know, Jaina, Varian, etc., dies, then you will actually lose, uh, lose the encounter, so you need to do that. Now, Jaina will cast a Blizzard, and you should tank any adds in there if possible, because the Blizzard does high AoE damage to all of them. Now, the second wave will contain two different kinds of mobs, a Tidal Shaman and a Flag Bearer. The Tidal, the tidal Shaman drops Healing Totems, which must be destroyed. It casts Tidal Wave, which should be interrupted, and Healing Chain, or something like that, which absolutely must be interrupted. Now, there is also a Flag Bearer, which drops a Buff Banner, which buffs everything else around him, so it needs to be killed. The next wave will be a mini-boss called Korgra the Snake. She drops some green AoE in the floor, puts a dot in the tank, and enrages at 30%. She also comes with two adds called Evan Stalkers, which do a frontal cone from time to time. They're really not a problem. Soon after, Korgra spawns, a Demolisher will also spawn. Now, the Demolisher will start attacking the tower, damaging the players inside it, and that's why the tower group will not have left at this stage. So, the Demolisher should be nuked down, and when the Demolisher is about to die, that is when the tower group should leave to the freshly opened tower, which I believe is the south tower, or maybe it's the north. Hey, it's one of them. It's the only one that's open. So, um, yeah, kill that, and then the tower team goes off to do that, while they leave the ground team to continue battling Korgra and the adds that come. The tower team will face some easy adds and an easy mini-boss. The mini-boss is at the top of the tower and does Thunderclap, which will slow players, and Arcing Smash, which is a knockback cone that will hit you off the tower. It's very easy to see, and it's quite easy to avoid. Once they're all dead, this group will return, bar one player, who will go on the cannon to kill the Proto-Drake adds that spawn in the air. Once those adds are dead, the cannon player can also return. Now, meanwhile, the ground group will still be fighting, and by the time the tower group returns, they will be battling Thranrock. Thranrock is another mini-boss. Now, all you need to know about him is that he does a cleave attack, so face him away from the raid and don't stand close to him, if, you know, possible. And uh, he also does this thing where he chains you and he pulls you into his hitbox, and then he does a massive, really powerful AoE. So, uh, what you need to do is basically just run out once he chains you in. There will also be Bone Crushers up at this stage, which should be killed and have uh, Fracture stunned out of, as I said earlier. Now, around this time, a Demolisher will also spawn. It should be killed pretty much instantly so that the tower group can go and secure the second tower. Now, the second tower is pretty much identical to the first. And while that group goes on, the uh, the original ground group just continues fighting Thranrock and the other adds. So, uh, once the tower is nearly cleared, a player should run from that tower over to the other one and use the rope to get up as quickly as possible. This means that both of the cannons will be manned. Now, once both players are in the cannons, you can shoot down Galacrass in order to start the next phase. And you should do this when there are not many adds left on the ground, but you don't want to delay too long because a new wave of adds could spawn. Pretty much, if you summon Galacrass down to the ground when there's way too many adds, then you'll all get killed. But if you wait too long, then a fresh wave will come, and that could be a raid wipe if your ground group isn't fast enough to kill them all. Now, in Phase 2, Galacrass will come down to the ground, and his main ability is called Flames of Galacrond. This is a ball that fixates on a player, and when it connects with them, it does high damage to the raid. Now, the gimmick of this ability is that the final burst of damage is reduced for every player that, that it passes through on its journey to its target. So, what you want to do for this phase is face the boss away from the raid and stack behind him in maximum melee range. If a ball fixates on you, you want to run behind the group so that it, the ball travels through the group, then hits you for reduced damage. 
When the ball passes through it, uh, passes through a player, it will apply a debuff to them, which increases damage taken. When this hits three to five stacks of the debuff, you should probably just run out of the group and wait about 10 seconds for the debuff to fall off. Do this right and you will have a kill. This boss is certainly, it's a bit of a step up in terms of difficulty we found from the first four. Um, the, by the way, the footage in the background is normal, but since Flex is just the tuned down, tuned down version of normal, it's pretty much representative of what you will see. After all, if you're a Flex guild, then this content will be appropriate difficulty to you, therefore the relative difficulty that this is for you will be the same as it is for us doing normal, if you get what I mean. Anyway, I hope the guides helped out, It's uh, this is pretty much everything I know from the fight and uh, should get you killed. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.